So let me. Uh, I, we're gonna need audio visual for this because I'm still. I'm a little far away from the camera. And I don't think you can see this. Oh, I know. I can still see it. You can still see it. All right. Um, we're doing this on a Wednesday again, which is like you're like, dude, Nash, nothing wrong with your schedule. Well, to be nothing fair, Monday I woke up and I looked in the mirror and. Uh, This was looking back at me, and I know some of you are already going like, well, yeah, Nash, you have to look at that every day. I feel for you. And I, pre I appreciate you. You're smart. Ooh, la, la. But um, this this is what uh, I, what looked back at me on this particular Monday. <laughs> um, now, I'm not an expert. I've only uh, been using eyeballs for 40 something years. Um, so, you know, take this, take this as a grain of salt, but I don't think eyeballs are supposed to do that. Not generally, no. So I, I didn't, everybody's like, oh, well, so that happens sometimes when I sneeze or cough. Or, you know what? If I had sneezed or coughed and suddenly there was blood in my eye, I would have noticed. This was just, yeah, I woke up and then. the capillary in there, but usually something causes it. So I was like, well, that's not right. And also it was really sore that morning too. Yeah. And it shouldn't hurt. If you just burst a capillary or something, it shouldn't hurt. Yeah. Usually. It was like, it wasn't the eyeball itself. It was just kind of, there's some irritation under the eye and like around it. It was kind of, so, um, I called the doctor and I went in, I saw my doctor. I couldn't see him Monday. I had to see her Tuesday. Saw my doctor and she did tests. And checked my blood pressure and was like, well, um, your blood pressure is a little higher than it should be, even though we have you on medication uh, and you're also having migraines again. I don't know if the eyeball is related, but it kind of possibly could be. So she had to get they, they gave me she gave me some stuff to level me out yesterday and change my medication dosage. And now here we are. And, uh, yeah. Mother... -la -la. I mean, it's good they caught that. Well, yeah, obviously. But, yeah, it, it, it's been a... It's, I know people are like something more exciting, but I have... My eye blew open. Well, kind yeah. of, but... You know, I had a nice. blowout. I tend to have weirdly low blood pressure. Like, they take it, and then they're like, I must have messed up. Let me do that again. And I'm like, you probably didn't. I don't know if you've looked at me. <laughs> This is this is what it is. You're secretly dead. Um. So yeah, that that's been my week. I, I'm sorry, my schedule is all screwed. I apologize, but to be fair, that that will mess with you. You, you wake yeah. up in the morning, you look, you go to the mirror, you, you know, you, you get up in the morning, you have your routine. The cat is screaming as usual. You stumble down, stumble down the hall. Morning pee, you get up, you look in the mirror, you're about to brush your teeth, and then... That's like some weird body horror night, you know? And with eyeballs, like, I can't... Oh, I can't God, anything yes. with eyeballs. I can't. I have, to this day, never seen the movie Saw, because somebody told me there's a scene with a thing with an eyeball, and I'm just... No, thank you. I don't do eyeballs. And apparently, as this heals, it's supposed to change to uh, yellow, which is going to be very weird as well. All right, let's uh, get the intro going, because good God. My my weird shit was not the only weird shit, put it that way. Over here, loop and loop. Uh, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Let's get that intro. Go oh. each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the uh, worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And uh, we've got our normal stories, but we're just going to start with a quick one, just just to, there's, there's not a lot to say here, just a quick one to, to mention it and move on. Um, but it is uh, one of the uh, departments we, we often have to cover. 
here on this show. And um, the story is as as follows. Um, fucking put it back! Oh no. Rare 5,000 year old crystal dagger is uncovered in prehistoric Iberian mono megalithic tomb that may have been used by a high ranking person to gain, quote, magical powers. Put it back! You know what, though? We might need it when the White Walkers come. <laughs> you remember when Sam found that random pack of obsidian blades and they were like, what the fuck are these? Or dragon glass? I guess it was dragon glass. Why are... We might need them. Why are archaeologists oh. determined to get their asses cursed? Like, they're just like... Even, you know, if it was me, and I do not believe in all this bullshit, but even me, I'd be like, I would get the, the intern to do this shit. See, I believe in everything. And I would I would not even give the intern a direct order, okay? I'd be like, hey, intern, there, there might be stuff in there. You don't know. I'm not responsible if you I'm wander in there and fuck with things. And you do what you think is best. Can yeah, we, can I don't, just stop. We already have I mean, one plane. I mean, it's cool looking. Yeah, it it looks cool, but put it back. We already have one plague. Put put it the fuck back. Leave it alone. God damn. Although I do want to just, just remember where you put it. Although I do want to point <laughs> out that even five thousand years ago, and this is kind of neat. Um, look at the grip. They, they put like a grip on it. Yeah, you see that? Like 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 a textured. They they even knew how to do that five thousand years ago. Which is kind of cool. Wait, but do you see what the bottom is made out of? Um, that's a human jaw. Jawbone, yes, yes. But like a human, yes. Jaw, yes. Put it Those back. <laughs> Fucking put it back. Uh, anyway, moving on. This is from Pasadena. Um, we we have lots of people on the story uh, on the show. Lots of stories where people do very stupid things for very, very little gain. We're like, really, you're going to follow the, you, you're getting all of these consequences for that. Really? It's this just is, not worth it. This is the epitome of just not worth it. Armed robber demands chicken and waffles at Roscoe's in Pasadena. That's it? A man walked into the Pasadena Roscoe's house of chicken and waffles, got into a confrontation with employees because he was unmasked, pulled a gun and took chicken without paying and left. You're going to get an armed robbery charge for some chicken? It was the principle of the thing. You see, they made they 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 said he had to wear a mask. So it, it, the principle of the Surveillance video posted by ABC7 shows a man behind the restaurant counter. He appears to cook to cock a firearm before collecting a plate of food and leaving. Uh cocking, yeah, cocking. But in all seriousness, I don't I don't think you understand if you don't fuck with guns, um once you've actually pulled the hammer back on a on a yeah. on a that 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 is bad mojo because that shit's much easier to just go off. Um, that's the thing you do. That's the thing you should only do when you're ready to kill somebody. Cook Robert Gonzalez told the station the armed suspect walked into the kitchen and said, quote, put all the chicken in the bag. No waffles, just, just chicken. I feel like if Hurley from Lost had gone a different direction, <laughs> This could have been him. <laughs> if he oh. hadn't won the lottery and wound up on the island. Like, they, when they, he actually said that, that's what the cook says he said. When, when they find this dude, you're going up for an assault charge, armed robbery. You, yeah. you, you, you are not. This is bad. They, they are All going. Because you couldn't put a piece of cloth over your fucking plague vector mouth hole. And got called out for it. You, you, your ass got called out for it. I, 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 you're going to jail, stupid. They have a surveillance camp. That's the other thing. 
And this yeah. is the, the the irony of this keeps happening. If you had just worn a mask, it's not that hard. They wouldn't have found your. They, they would have a harder time identifying you. Yeah. For committing a crime that you committed because you refused to wear a mask. And I'm a little jealous of that because I. Even if I, if, even if I'm right, like there was a meme going around on TikTok a while back that like, it's nice if you wear a mask and sunglasses, nobody can recognize you. And I'm like, eh. yeah, I just, it, <sighs> it's not that just wearing the fucking mask. They are so stubborn about this stupid fucking thing with the mask. They will not do it. Even if it benefits them from keeping them out of jail, they won't fuck the fucking like, why is this the hill everybody wants to die on? I don't, I don't understand. There's another thing. Uh, I don't. Is, is the Amber Alert a thing outside of the United States? I think it's just a U.S. thing, right? I think, I think it's just the U.S. Right. If if you're not in the U.S., the Amber Alert system, uh, it's not a color. It's based on. It's named after a missing child, and what what it is is they put out a notification to everyone when a child goes missing. And now it's expanded to cell phones. Yeah. So it can be two in the morning. And all of a sudden you get the emergency broadcast tone shooting the fuck out of your cell phone to tell you a child has gone missing, which. Yeah, OK, kind of important. But on the other hand, the fuck am I going to do about it? My ass in bed. I can't remember the last time I didn't have my phone on silent. Like, I don't even know what my ringtone is. <laughs> it's Friday. It's probably Friday. Friday, sure? Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Um, but imagine you, you wake up, the phone's making a terrible noise, you roll over, you look at your phone, and this is the Amber Alert. Texas mistakenly issues Amber Alert listing Chucky from Child's Play as oh suspect. God. Texas Department of Public Safety is forced to issue an apology after it mistakenly sent out an Amber Alert that listed the horror character Chucky as a suspect. According to Ken's TV in San Antonio, the alert issued on the morning of January 29th listed the haunted doll from the 1988 horror film Child's Play as the suspect in a child abduction. The alert listed 28-year-old Chucky's height as 3 foot 1 inch and his weight as 16 pounds. His race was listed as Other Doll. The alert cautioned that Chucky was wielding a huge kitchen knife. If it was an accident, why was all the information correct? <laughs> like somebody had typed that in. Well, apparently what this was is this is their test um, profile. Oh. So somebody who worked there thought it would be really funny that instead of it just saying test, suspect, age... They'd put Chucky in there, which I'm sure everybody in the office thought this was hilarious. Remember how in the last story I said, I believe in everything. <laughs> I would be very upset. <laughs> and poor Dan would be like, you know, that's fake. And I'd be like, do I? Do it's, I know it's fake? It's the Amber Alert, man. Right. That was the emergency prognosis for no. Come on, you don't know. It's been that like, kind I of. I have my favorite childhood doll in the house. I'd be, I'd be like out back setting it on fire. Just to be <laughs> sure. Had that thing since I was six. <laughs> I just, I can imagine just rolling over and seeing. I would be fucking if I woke up, woke up and looked at my phone and saw this shit. I would just be, wait, what, 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 what's happening? Like, am I, am I still asleep? <laughs> am I only dreaming? <laughs> it's, it's really what? What is it? What the? What, what yeah, is, I would be very upset. What the fuck? No, thank you. K, uh, KTRK TV and Houston reports the alert was sent to email subscribers three separate times. Oof. And it's bad enough, like in the middle of the night, you get an alert that something it's not supposed to be. We have 
we have a motion sensor camera Mm -hmm. for the feral cat that I feed. And it alerted one night. So I checked expecting to see Houdini the cat. And it was a fucking tweaker wandering around on our porch. And that's when I woke up my husband. Because I was like, there's... There's a there's a random ass person who I think is on all the drugs <laughs> just wandering around the porch. And I don't know I don't know what to do about that. That's that's a you problem. <laughs> it turned he was he was totally fucked up and was just wandering the neighborhood checking out everybody's porches because we all had Halloween decorations up. Yeah, if one of the cats is missing their toys, that's a you problem. Dudes right. on fucking drugs is a Dan problem. Like I was expecting a cat. The vision of labor. Dude. (laughs) And that was very upsetting to me. Uh, Next up comes from France. And I'm yet another of, are we still doing this shit? The pandemic's still going. Are you still pulling this off? But also I'm a little impressed that the sheer fucking audacity of this, my God. Um, 81 person French orgy broken up for violating pandemic curfew. An 81 person orgy at a French warehouse broken up by police last Friday. The sex party about uh, about 20 miles outside Paris also featured booze, sound systems and light installations. Police responded to the party at 9 p.m. three hours after France's curfew and found uh, first found 11 people in the parking lot. Once authorities were able to legally enter the warehouse, they discovered the orgy. That's not a phrase you want to hear. <laughs> I mean, it might be. You know, everybody has this idea in their head that the orgy is just, oh my God, that's so sexy. It's so cool. It really, that kind of thing really isn't. Because there's there's a whole lot of naked flapping around in various ways. And it's not like it's not you see like the shit on like like Westworld had a couple of fucking orgies and Game of Thrones has all these nice core like Witcher 3 had like an orgy. All these nice choreographed orgies with all these super pretty people, these model class. Real orgy is a little bit stickier and, and smellier and slappier and I just wonder who on the orgy planning committee (laughs) didn't even think to make it an even number of people. (laughs) I mean, do you feel a little bad for person number 81? Look, excuse me, I know everybody's a little busy, but is anybody willing to give me a handy? You got two of them. Come on. It's even a prime number, I think. (sighs) No, it's not. Nine it's not a, times not a prime number. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You know, I just feel bad for person 81, except maybe they didn't get COVID. Oh, we're going to have to bleep that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, maybe now isn't the best time to throw no. a warehouse party Full designed of- for people to rub on each other and press their holes together. And and liquids and yeah, fluids and stuff not 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 the time just is everybody's all like oh how do you know dude have, okay if you've ever had sex it is not like it is in the fucking pornos and shit it is not like it is it's not like choreographed and no 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 we we are we are so all of us we, we're so ridiculous when having sex it's just the nature of having sex. It's just fucking. Also, weird. I hate to break it to you, youngins. Most people can't even do half those positions. <laughs> Not all that flexible. Did you just? Sorry. You know? I mean, even when you're doing the sex by yourself, you look ridiculous. Come on. It's it's just it's just how we are. And yes, guys, I know about threesomes. I I was making a joke. I don't know if you guys know what we do here. <laughs> we make we you send us stories and we make jokes about that. I thought we made donuts. 
I would love if we made donuts because I could go for some donuts, but I don't like that's hard to do from our distance. What's my name? Uh, Dunkachino. <laughs> but that's that's what we we make jokes here. Yeah. Ugh. Wisconsin. Wisconsin is next. And this this is gonna sound like it's not us. It's not an us I story. Hope there wasn't an orgy in Wisconsin, because it's no. gonna be cold. The, the, this is not not gonna gonna sound like an us sort of story until we get to a certain point in this. This is gonna sound like a wait. This is like a normal news story. No, 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 no. Stay, stay, stay with us here. Bizarre offense. Twenty one year old Appleton man sentenced to fourteen years for robbery. Twenty one year old from Appleton was sentenced to fourteen years in federal prison for robbing a credit union. United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Wisconsin made the announcement about Zheng Zai Yang uh, Thursday following a bench trial. The uh, senior United States District Judge William C. Grishbach found Yang guilty of armed bank robbery, brandishing a short barrel rival, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, this, this isn't one of your stories. Yang entered a credit union on the west side of Appleton, uh, wore a black plastic theater mask, sunglasses, and a black hooded sweatshirt. He approached the counter, the report says Yang pulled out a short barreled shotgun, demanded money for the teller. Uh, Yang held the tellers at gunpoint while they gave him money. Uh, before he exited the credit union, he restrained employees with cable ties. Nash, why are we talking about this story? Pretty standard fare. The release says Yang admitted robbing the credit union, telling an Appleton detective that he, quote, decided to try something new today. So I robbed a bank. Like, I know quarantine's boring. But just make sourdough like everybody else. <laughs> There's, there is so much you can do that you've never done before to try something new. Learn, Learn dances. Learn guitar. Take up whittling. Go to a dog park. Move a feral cat into your bathroom. <laughs> There's so many things. There are how there many are foreign many. languages you could attempt? Come on. I, I get, it, make, get an OnlyFans. I hear that's popular. Decided to try something new today, so I robbed a bank. That's not just something you decide on yeah. a whim. It's not like you're passing by the pawn shop and you see a shotgun in the window and you're like, you know what I've never tried? I mean, I feel like some people that is the thought process. <laughs> people out there that definitely that's as far as the thought process went. Like there's the pawn shop with the shotgun on one side. There's the dollar store with the mask and the zip ties on the other side. It's like, you know what? The universe is speaking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I feel inspired. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Well, this this next one is is much let uh, the, the the fucking audacity of this guy. I I got to give him credit. Just the Jesus Christ. You okay down there, Mister? You're jingling away. Okay. And it's Florida, of course. Orlando airport passenger busted trying to board plane with twenty two pounds of meth. Whoa! Suspect claim bag. Was it his? Florida pass a passenger at Orlando International Airport who attempted to board a plane with 22 pounds of crystal meth claimed the drugs weren't his. Inside the backpack, police said the agent found 22 vacuum sealed bags wrapped in white clothing that each contained a pound of meth and 900 in cash. Brown, 46. Claimed the bag wasn't his. He fell asleep at the gate after flying in from Los Angeles. And when he woke up, the bag was next to him. And he assumed it was his since he arrived with an identical bag. So wait, hold up. Somebody, a drug trafficker. Yeah. 
saw you asleep in the airport. And he thought, hey, that guy's backpack looks just like mine. Why don't we swap? Yeah. And the plan from there was... You know, I bet whatever he's got in that backpack is worth the same as 20 pounds of meth and $900. Probably not. I'm going to leave this guy with 22 pounds of meth. Like, like, good try. <laughs> the fucking audacity of this motherfucker. <laughs> was it mine? Hey, they specifically ask you at the airport, like, did you pack this bag yourself? Did yep. anybody do this bag? <laughs> So to be like, oh, that's not mine. Really? His excuse. Well, now it's a whole new situation. Dark Angel of Otaku says his excuse is hit or meth. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> I. Just, I mean, you tried. Uh, well, this is this was not a fucking late nineties uh, farce comedy. This is not nuns on the runs or some bullshit, okay? That's so crazy. How did that happen? How did that happen? Oh my god, where's my copy of Bridges in Madison County? I didn't get to finish it. I don't know how it ends. <laughs> anyway, it was I love it. He it went it got a little more elaborate than he just went. He didn't go just go was mine. He went, no, no, here's what happened. And I know that that's what happened while I was asleep. <laughs> uh, final so that story doesn't add up, sir. The final one tonight is well, landlords fucking suck. Um, rental agencies are kind of bad, but landlords, landlords are kind of the worst. And I know some of you out there about to go, well, I like my landlord. Um, at any given moment, this might be your landlord. This is fucking wild, yo. Pocahontas County landlord facing multiple charges after false report of hostage situation. According to court documents, Pocahontas County dispatchers notified West Virginia, uh, West Virginia State Police that a man was reportedly holding two people hostage at a residence um, they said the caller, Stephen Warner, who owns the residence, gave permission for any law enforcement to enter the property. After they arrived, police entered the two-story residence and found two men and a woman inside. According to court documents, they were arrested due to exigent circumstances. When questioned by the investigators, the three people denied being held against their will or being threatened in any way. Police then cleared the scene. Investigators went to Warner's home to gather more information. He answered the door with a tire iron in one hand and a pipe wrench in the other. Investigators ordered Warner to drop the weapons and step out of the home. After doing so, Warner was patted down. Investigators found a small plastic bag containing a white powdery substance. Warner admitted the substance was meth. According to documents, the three people said Warner was at their residence with a crowbar shortly after the police left that evening. They told investigators she said one of them was going to die. So this is even after the dude had been arrested. Meth. I don't actually didn't say if they arrested him for meth. They found meth on him. He didn't get arrested. Um, then he was arrested. Okay, he was arrested for false reporting of an emergency and possession of controlled substance. He is in jail with a bond set of fifteen hundred dollars. The dude was doing this to get them evicted. <laughs> Yes, sir. Simba's going on adventures. We got a cabinet for the litter spaceship, and everybody's very excited about it. <laughs> so, so yeah, th this was his scheme because right now a lot of landlords are at this; they're not getting money for their properties because we right. have we have a rent hiatus. It's kind of a situation with the whole world. And what, 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 trying to evict the, this was his scheme to get them evicted. Maybe if you want to report false crimes to get your tenants evicted, 
you should try to not be committing real crimes. Yeah, like when the cops come to the door, I'm not a fan of the cops, but even I know answering the door with a pipe wrench in one hand and a tire iron in the other. And matching your pants. Yeah, and method that none of that's gonna end well for me. Any yeah. one of those alone is gonna end badly. All three together? Yeah. That's not gonna be a good afternoon. That's gonna be a bad afternoon. Uh Matheson says, doesn't he have keys to their property? Why wouldn't he just plant stuff rather than call police? He's on meth. Yeah. That that's like that's like a lot of work. <laughs> and I know this show gets a lot gets a lot of shit, rightfully show, but have you ever watched Breaking Bad and that one episode with Jesse and the meth heads and digging yeah. the hole? Yeah. That's a meth plan. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have followed this show, but things like meth kind of impair your decision-making <laughs> skills. A wee bit. So, yeah, fuck landlords. Because not only was this guy a landlord, he was a high on meth landlord, so it was just the worst, worst of all worlds. He just walks around wielding a tire iron, apparently. Like you do. I mean... It, you know, what, what, what did you do? That's upsetting. Mother fucker. And then when it doesn't work, going over to their house and yelling at them and threatening to kill them. Well, I'll just kill one of you. Okay. What? Why would... You're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking psycho. I guess the, the first thing we've learned tonight is that um, don't be a landlord and don't be on meth and don't be a landlord on meth. What happens if your landlord goes to prison? Um, That's a good question, actually. Probably not. It probably doesn't work out well for you because, yeah, because you, you, you'll you have some, maybe the property will transfer to someone else. and You don't have an agreement with them and blah, blah, blah. It, it never, none of this shit ever works out well for, for people who have, you know, it, it's not their fault. Just how it goes. Um, we've learned the, uh, that's not my bag bit could only go so far. Didn't work for Shaggy, not going to work for you. How did he open the door with his hands full? That's not. I can, no, 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 no. I can turn a doorknob with a pipe wrench in my hand. You watch me. Let's not find out what else he was wielding at the cops, okay? Um, We've learned that uh, life is short and you should try new things, but one of those things is not bank robbery. No. We've learned that maybe of all the things, the bad ideas you could have in the middle of a pandemic, an orgy is probably like the top one. That's That's up there for sure. I don't think there's there's much worse. Not even a, like a concert is as bad as an orgy because an orgy you definitely get infected with some shit. My neighbors who keep throwing parties and playing beer pong, which is bad. Maybe they're having orgies too. I don't know. We've learned that your your inside in inter office joke might be really hilarious to you, but when you're dealing with shit like child abduction. Maybe don't be a little less hilarious. Any joke that you have going around the workplace, you should think about what it's going to be like to explain it to your boss's boss. And if you don't picture that going well for you, just don't do it. Um, we've learned that if you're going to go to jail, my God, pick something other than chicken to be the reason you've been incarcerated. Yeah. Like, I really fucking like French fries. I'm not going to prison for some French fries. And finally, briefly, we learned, um, stop, stop taking the fucking ancient artifacts, especially a human job. if it's a, if it's a, d d something that's specifically made to bestow magical powers. Yeah. You are just, about to kick off a Wes Craven film. 